minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos, and today we're going to make a really quick episode about testing out nose cone and their effect on the KSP atmosphere. Now I was recently uh, notified that uh, point 0.22, I guess point 0.23 as well, have um, changed it so the nose cones actually are calculated in the atmospheric mathematics of the entire game, or programming. Now, I'm no professional by any means, but I figured that if that was the case, then a nose cone would help the rocket cut through the atmosphere faster, saving both time and fuel. So I built this little gizmo right here. It's a lot like uh, Scott Manley did with the Ramfarer mod a long time ago. He put a nose cone on one and left the nose cone out on the other. Now, technically, if of course, this mathematical equation is uh, put into the nose cone part. The one on the left hand side with the nose cone should accelerate faster and bypassed, bypass the one on the right. As you can see here, mass is 0 0.03, drag is 0 0.1. Now, if this is not the case, then the rocket on the left hand side with the nose cone the KSP program will calculate the mass and the drag, meaning that the rocket on the left hand side will actually start dragging more and it'll be heavier slightly, which means that the rocket on the right hand side will fly right past it. If, of course, the nose cone aerodynamics is not calculated, and I don't mean like weight and drag, I mean actually like cutting through the atmosphere, allowing you to save both time and fuel. All right, and here we go. Launch. And, um, oh dear. Why is the one on the right going faster? It doesn't have a nose cone. Unless, of course, the nose cones are not aerodynamically calculated. Yeah. See, unfortunately, KSP, with its stock program, is calculating the drag and the weight of the nose cone rather than its supposed effect on the atmosphere. And while the other one doesn't have this extra drag and extra weight, it of course goes faster. It's actually, um, when when you have a part that actually, in, uh, wow, look at it go. <laughs> when you have a part that um, you want to add to your rocket, but if you add to your rocket, it makes it more less efficient, then yeah, they need to fix that. Well, maybe it's just that nose cone. Maybe this nose cone is better. Maybe this is the one with the calculation on it. If so, then like the, uh, like I said previously, the mass and drag shouldn't matter much because of the fact that it should be cutting through the atmosphere, helping the rockets get through the atmosphere quicker. Could you imagine if NASA or any other private company launched a rocket with a flat top compared to a nose cone? Yeah, that wouldn't be too smart. Okay, let's give it a test. And launch. Alright, here we go. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Nope. That's not right. See, the nose cone should be piercing right through the atmosphere. The aerodynamics should be calculated so that it makes the rocket travel faster through the atmosphere. Uh-huh. If that, if that happened in real life, we'd have some serious problems. <laughs> Imagine jets with blunt, flat noses. Oh, we can break the sound barrier like this. I'm sure you could. Yeah, right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I told you this was going to be a short one. Just nose cone testing to see if they uh, have uh, fixed that nose cone calculation thing yet in KSP and it doesn't seem like they have. Well, thank you so much for watching. I am Veos, signing off.